Hello, my friends, Evolutionary Energy Art family. So, you guys, there is so much info coming out right now. It's just incredible. All the the new info, the new data, the new releases, everything that's, well, just, I guess, coming out into the open. I really got a question. How much of this stuff have people known all along? So this is out of ExoPolitics, and uh, this is written by Dr. Michael Sala. And he's talking about the Earth catastrophe cycle and Ben Davidson. I just finished uh, watching one of Ben's videos. And basically, he's talking about um, the same thing that I started to hear more and more people talking about, and that's the sun having a micronova. Now, we, we've heard about the solar flash, and if you guys um, remember, there was a remote viewer that used to talk about the the kill shot and um, basically it's just like when the sun is going to have a super event uh, which Ben Davidson is calling a micronova you know it's it's a solar flash it's actually kind of like a shedding of um, its outer skin in a way and the fact that this info is coming out now for more than one person speaking about it and when this event happens, it's not going to bode well for the side of the earth that's facing the sun when it's hit by this. Um, very, very concerning, <laughs> to say the least. So it's fascinating that we didn't hear about this before, and now it's all coming out. At least I never heard about it before, whether it was something that was known in the scientific community you know, 30, 40 years ago, uh, something tells me, you know, this has been kept under wraps. But the scientific data confirms that micronova events are common occurrences in our galaxy and such events span Earth's history. They are so to, associated with polar shifts, yet the evidence has been suppressed by government authorities for decades. So in part four of his video series, Ben Davidson present scientific studies showing how micronovas have been observed occurring in multiple stars by astronomers. So micronova is Davidson's term for a supernova type event that is not large enough to exhaust or destroy the star generating it, but large enough to devastate nearby planets. He said, what is a micronova? It's not a supernova. It's not really even a nova as it is like the little sister of a nova, one that can affect the entire world, but not completely destroy it. So Davidson's video shows evidence that such events are cyclic part of the life of a star. It includes the following list of 10 known recurring nova events observed in the Milky Way galaxy. And so you see that list. And so what you're looking at is the, an event which might be as much as 40 times the power of the most destructive solar storm observed in modern history, the 1859 Carrington event. This would make the Younger Dryas micronova, which the Younger Dryas was 9700 BC, and that was a mass extinction, a huge mass extinction. You know, just uh, in relatively recent times, 9700 BC is when that happened. And so this would make the Younger Dryas micronova as much as an X100 plus solar flare, according to the measurement scale currently in use. Quite alarming, most definitely, especially if this were to repeat anytime soon. And, you know, listening to what he was describing, he was basically saying that the sun's going to change. And, and it's, it's amazing what, what, what he's saying is we're going to have these changes in the sun, which we are seeing. We're seeing these changes now. So, you know, our old school yellow sun that you may remember if you were, you know, born in the 60s or, or the 70s, or even, you know, even probably even later. Uh, God, I forget how long the sun's looked weird now. Uh, do you guys remember? But honestly, what he is saying is that the sun's going to go through this change and it's becoming more whitish, which it is. Then there's going to be basically this huge blast. Uh, you're going to see the, the sun go red, and that makes me think of Red Kachina. And, uh, 
you're going to end up having a blackout, which, you know, it, the sun's going to look black, and that's going to basically bring back the Bible, three days of darkness. All these things go seem to go so well together. And then we'll actually be back to our good old sun, just the way it used to be. So pretty wild stuff, and I really encourage you guys to go listen. And it's it's fascinating. And so in part five of his video series, he interviews solar cycle researcher Douglas Vogt, uh, who I've been watching, and many of you guys have too. And he talks all about this, and he says this happens about every 12,000 years is what he has discovered. It's something that's going to be about every 12,000 years, and it's due right now. So we are in that stages. And he, he's saying that, um, I believe it was 2045 or 2046 is when he thinks it's going to happen, the, the big one. Um, but, you know, I encourage you guys to check that out as well. And then they're also talking about uh, Corey Good, who, uh, if you guys don't, if you haven't watched any Gaia TV or, you know, uh, Cosmic Disclosure, uh, Corey Good claims to be part of the SSP. Well, he was part of the Secret Space Program. And so he claims that he was part of that since childhood. And he says he has received intelligence briefings about when the solar flash will occur from two independent sources, the uh, secret space program alliance and the inner earth civilization he calls the Anshar. And so he, he's interesting to watch whether or not you believe him as well. And so, you know, he says that it's something that is, is also coming and that everybody knows there's going to be a big, huge flash. Uh, everybody knows it's coming. And, uh, you know, this is fascinating, fascinating stuff. And this would make total sense why these guys are building these bases, you know, under the mountains like crazy, because that's going to be the only place where you're safe is inside the Earth from this blast. If you are on the side of the Earth, that is, you know, facing the sun at that time. So I guess you got kind of a 50-50 shot there. And I'm sure you guys will work out the uh, the numbers and tell me exactly what, you know, what type of shot we have. But this is really um, concerning is, is a word that I would say is very, very mild. And so, you know, they have different timelines that they're talking about, you know, some between the 2018 to 2023, 2024 window. So anyway, it's within many people that are watching this video's lifetime that they're expecting this impending solar flash micronova event to actually possibly happen. And the way that the sun looks, according to this, is actually it's not a sun simulator. It's just the sun is going through a different period of change. And of course, we got this, this report out, which you guys may or may not have heard it yet. But we know the magnetic North Pole is moving faster and faster uh, towards Siberia. And now it's moving so quickly, scientists have had to release new data a year ahead of schedule, keep the navigation systems working properly. So it's speeding up vastly. It's right now going at 34 miles uh, per year towards Siberia. So that has increased dramatically. And uh, it's pretty fascinating stuff as well. So we're getting... We're getting all sorts of data and confirmation about the fact that we are in uh, <laughs> we are in truly unprecedented times in the last thousands of years, ten thousand years, twelve thousand years, perhaps. It's pretty amazing, you know. The runways, everything is the GPS has been totally off because this is going so fast now. Since 1831, when it was first measured in the Canadian Arctic. It has moved about 1,400 miles. Wow, 1,400 miles towards Siberia. Its speed jumped from about 9 miles per hour to 34. So, and it's all about the interior liquid core and what's happening inside the Earth, which is r related, obviously, to the Sun and what's going on with the Sun. So our Milky Way galaxy is truly warped, at least around the edges. And it, <clears throat> it turns out that our Milky Way galaxy is truly warped, at least around the edges. Scientists in China and Australia released an updated 3D map of the Milky Way on Tuesday. They used 1,339 pulsating stars, young, newly cataloged stars, bigger and brighter than our sun, to map the galaxy's shape. Farther from the center, more warping or twisting 
there is in the Milky Way's outer hydrogen gas disk. Researchers say the warp spiral pattern is likely caused by the spinning force of the massive inner disk of stars. We usually think of spiral galaxies as being quite flat like Andromeda, which you can easily see through a telescope. But we are seeing that the Milky Way's fringes are really warped and twisted. And uh, we're, we're just getting blasted with all this new information. And this one's giant impacts caused by interplanetary collisions. So again, I mean, all of our legends, all these things that have been speculated upon, you know what, now they're giving us scientific, quote unquote, facts that show that, you know, all this stuff has been pretty much dead on. Dead on, you know. That's, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and it just shows that most of this has been just covered up. So astronomers have found fresh evidence for significant planetary diversity within a single exoplanet system, suggesting that giant high-speed collisions are partly responsible for planetary evolution. An international team of scientists led by Italy's National Institute for Astrophysics an evolving physicist from the University of Bristol spent three years observing the exoplanetary system Kepler-107 via the Telescopio Nazionale Galileo in La Palma. And La Palma is that big volcano that could collapse and end up causing that mega tsunami in the Atlantic. So they gathered all sorts of data, and basically what they're finding is that it's not uncommon for a planet that's close to the host star to be the densest due to heating and interaction with the host star, which can cause atmosphere loss. However, as reported in Nature Astronomy in the case of Kepler-107, the second planet, 107c, is denser than the first, 107b, so much so that 107c contains in its core an iron mass fraction at least twice as large as that 107b, indicating that some Point 107C had a head on high speed giant collision with a protoplanet of the same mass or more collisions with multiple planets of lower mass. These impacts would have ripped off part of the rock and silicate mantle of Kepler 107C, suggesting that its density is now it, that it is denser than it was originally. And so, this is lending credence to the whole idea of Tiamat and Nibiru and all of that that we hear from the ancient Sumerians as you know earth came from the remnants of Tiamat and uh, you know the asteroid belt past Mars is, is remnants <laughs> so pretty interesting because you know everything just is just seems to be tying together so well that it's almost disconcerting when you think about it so this is what happens when a stream of solar wind traveling 1.3 million miles an hour strikes the Earth's magnetic field. And the Earth is exiting a stream of solar wind that sparked a G1-class geomagnetic storm and magnificent auroras when it first arrived on January 31st and February 1st. But what happens when a stream of solar wind traveling 1.3 million miles an hour strikes Earth's magnetic field? Well, look at the magnet magnetometer there. And so you could see the action pretty intense and wait till the microburst although we may not be able to see that when, when it comes uh, depending on you know well we might not be able to see it when you think about it because everything's going to get fried uh, basically and and it, of course then that makes you think about surviving six months you know without relying on the government or or the grid and so maybe that was a very mild warning concerning um, the microverse that's coming. Atmospheric river slams California while blizzard cl closes down ski resorts. Devastating floods force evacuation in burn areas. We've seen this. As much as nine feet of snow in the biggest storm system so far this season. And uh, we see the damage with the trees coming down. And we see mudslides. You got blizzard conditions, whiteout conditions going on up in the Sierras. Mammoth had received almost seven feet of snow, was expecting two and a half more feet by tonight. Incredible, but this, this is the reason why, because everything is really changing on the big scale. 
and many new volcanic eruptions going on in, the, in Indonesia, Argentina, Chile, Russia, and the fourth eruption of Steamboat Geyser in Yellowstone, and Yellowstone is acting up, you know, be aware of that as well. So floating robots spotted a huge plume of magna, uh, magma under the Galapagos Island area. And so the red circles on this map represent seismic events which help floating quote-unquote mermaids determine the shape of the magma under the islands. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And uh, we're just seeing all these things come together. And uh, you know, maybe perhaps they're actually sharing some true science with us for once. Maybe, maybe they're starting to not cover things up. And maybe they're doing it because... Uh, it's going to be impossible to cover things up, and it pretty much is getting to that point now anyway. Major disruption after snowstorm hits Czech Republic, 10 killed as a series of avalanches hit the Alps. So yet another round of severe winter weather wrecked havoc across parts of Europe over the past couple of days, claiming the lives of at least 10 people. Powerful blizzard hit the Czech Republic over the weekend, causing major disruption and leaving approximately 30,000 homes without power on February 3rd. Parts of the country received up to 7.9 inches of new snow and registered wind gusts of 90 miles an hour. The storm downed trees and power lines, closed roads, highways, disrupted flights. And, uh, you know, this is the world that we have now, as we see here. This is from Electroverse talking about it and giving you some photos. Uh, you know, it looks beautiful. I'll give you that. And uh, Europe is getting hit with a lot right now. Large amounts of Saharan dust to be pushed into southeastern Europe, particularly in Greece, over the next 24 to 48 hours. There were a lot of tornadoes, and uh, we have torrential rainfall for parts of Greece on Tuesday and Wednesday. 150 to 250 millimeters in 24 hours. And severe windstorm across uh, south-southwest Iceland today on February the 5th. Very, very low pressure for, you know, a storm like that in this area this time of year. And then as I was touching on tornadoes in Europe and the Mediterranean in January, 2019 kicked off with a lot of tornadic activity across southern Europe and the Mediterranean. Total of 61 reports are available pretty intense and you see the locations all over the Mediterranean mostly though through Italy Greece and over into Turkey and so we have valley fever cases in California continuing to increase so a potentially deadly illness found in the soil and dusty winds of California's Central Valley is on the rise state officials say documented cases of valley fever rose 11% in 2018 Preliminary total of 7,886 cases compared to 7,090 for the same period in 2017. And it's not just that. We have Washington measles outbreak climbs while other states are grappling with the disease. And we talked all about the whole vaccination issue with that. So since January 1st, Clark County Public Health has confirmed 49 cases of measles. In King County, home of Seattle, at least one confirmed case was reported. The vast majority of those who came down with measles, 41, were not vaccinated against the disease, Clark County officials said. And, uh, you know, this is really, as we know, it, it's a push for vaccinations. Did you know that women's brains are four years younger than men's on average, with, of people with the same biological, chronological age? So analysis of metabolic brain age might explain the differences in cognitive decline rates. So guys, it means we're declining faster than the ladies. Pretty, uh, well, I'll let you guys make up your own mind on, on what that means. So as always, my friends, thumbs up, support the channel. Please do subscribe. Go ahead, click the bell, get all notifications, share with as many as possible. I look forward to your comments on everything that's happening out there. God bless, my friends. Stay, stay safe out there, and namaste.